it has taken less than two months for SRAM's transmission technology and hangless interface to trickle down the ladder, as today it launches this, the new GX Eagle transmission. Is this another step in the direction of a wireless and hangless domination, or is it just another expensive trinket masquerading as a budget version of the latest and greatest tech that's all show and no go? I think it's high time we found out, so let's get the lowdown on what makes GX Eagle transmission tick. I think it's fair to say that SRAM has been the dominant force in the mountain bike drivetrain wars for the last decade. It was the first to make one by and electronic drivetrains truly mainstream and without being overly harsh, feels like it had another drivetrain brand starting with S scrambling around trying to catch up. Never want to rest on its laurels, SRAM has whacked it into the next gear with its new Eagle transmissions using the secret hiding behind its UDH Trojan horse. Now I say budget, but at £1,180 or $1,099 for a complete GX Eagle transmission, this is far from what you'd call cheap, and a jump of close to £200 or $200 over the old GX Axis drivetrain. It is however less than two thirds of the cost of the previous entry to SRAM's Eagle transmission, XO, which costs £1,715 or $1,599. What do you get for your hard-earned cash? In the box, you get the transmission derailleur and axis battery, pod controller, 10 to 52 tooth transmission cassette, flat top chain, and a dub crank set with 32 tooth chainring and neat two-piece bash guard. There's also the option of an e-bike group set for £1,015 or $949, which uses identical components but comes without a crank set. Though, if you want to go for a full matching setup, you can buy an e-bike compatible GX transmission crank set that uses the ISIS bottom bracket interface. The first thing you'll notice when comparing GX transmission to its more expensive siblings is the differing architecture of the derailleur. Like the first generation Axis drivetrains, XX and XO transmission derailleurs have the Axis batteries positioned at the rear. GX transmission, however, has a revised battery placement moving inside the hangless interface struts. SRAM claims this should provide better impact protection and keep it looking and shifting sharp throughout the typically hard life rear derailleur's lead. There's also a reconfigured gearbox, though SRAM haven't given any details on how, or indeed why, it's done this. We presume it's to reduce the cost of the derailleur, to help bring transmission down to this lower price point. Elsewhere though, much is shared with other derailleurs in the transmission ecosystem. Of course, the derailleur itself uses transmission's hangerless interface and full mount attachment method, using the wheel axle itself for direct contact with the cassette. That means no derailleur hanger and no traditional adjustment screws, for what SRAM claims is a quicker and easier setup. It does mean, however, that once again, if your bike doesn't use the UDH standard, then tough luck, as this lot won't fit. The skid plates, outer parallelogram link and the tool-free cage and clutch can all be swapped out and, in the case of the cage and clutch, can be upgraded if you wish. The inner part of the cage is steel rather than aluminium, which you'll find in the higher tier versions, saving cost and adding some weight. For most of us, this weight increase isn't going to make a difference, but supposedly this does improve durability. Like the rest of the group, it gets what SRAM calls a dark polar finish, which I think is nicely understated and not overly shouty. What do you think about the overall look of the rear derailleur? Let me know down in the comments. Another area where GX transmission treads its own path is the crankset. It's forged from aluminium, but doesn't feature the eye-catching polished and hollow arm design as seen on the XO version. Instead, it has to settle for a recess that should at least hopefully keep them looking tidy and shoe scuff free in the long run. As with the other transmissions, the cranks use a 55mm chain line for an improved chain angle when combined with the transmission cassette. Although not fitted, it also shares the unique independently removable two-piece bash guards, though this time they are composite rather than aluminium as on XO. They're designed to protect the chainring, which uses the same 8 bolt mounting pattern of the higher end transmissions. Unlike the older GX Eagle Axis, there is no carbon crank option, and given XO transmission also doesn't feature carbon cranks, it's unlikely we'll see them in the future either. As with the first round of SRAM's new transmissions, 
the brand makes a big song and dance about the GX chain and cassette. It claims the full X-Sync design shifts better the harder you pedal, and given our experience with the more expensive transmissions, it should stack up to that bold statement. The cassette also utilizes the full 520% range and 10 to 52 spread of its more expensive counterparts, with the larger 38 and 44 teeth cogs at the upper end claiming to optimize the steps between gears right up to that big old dinner plate 52 tooth cog. It also features the red setup cog, to supposedly make for foolproof installation. Where it differs from the other transmission cassettes is the construction. In order to cut cost, GX4 goes the X-Dome single-piece machine construction for the lower gears and instead uses SRAM's simpler pin-dome design. This is heavier as the cogs from gears 1 to 8 are pinned together, while a single-piece construction is used for the final four gears. Finally, the cassette is nickel-plated, which the brand claims should make it more durable while making less noise. The chain is pretty humble, using solid rather than hollow pins and link plates, and uses SRAM's flat-top profile. According to SRAM, this makes it suitable for EMTBs. As expected, the pod controller is shared with the other transmissions in the ecosystem, with the same two-button layout, handlebar clamping options, and plenty of adjustability. Finally, there's also new bronze stealth code and level brakes sold separately to tie in with the launch of GX Transmission. These join the ultimate and silver brakes in SRAM's range and feature the sleeker looking stealth architecture that places the master cylinder closer to the bar. This should give you a cleaner cockpit to match up with your fancy Eagle transmission. Right then, with all that tech out of the way, how does it ride? Our resident drivetrain destroyer and senior technical editor Alex Evans has been smashing the miles in on this rather snazzy Marin Rift Zone 29XR decked out with GX Eagle transmission for a few weeks, finding out how it performs. Ooh. I got my grubby mitts on GX transmission a few weeks prior to its release. Unlike XX though, which I put through the ringer over a wintry six months of arduous riding ahead of the launch, I've only managed a handful of rides on SRAM's most affordable transmission yet. Starting with its installation, while daunting at first because it differs from previous methods, in reality it's super intuitive, quick and easy. Installing all the components on our Marin Rift Zone test bike took less than 45 minutes from start to finish and resulted, just as SRAM promised, in a faultless setup. Of course, you still need to take care at crucial moments, but gone are the days of measuring the cassette and derailleur chain gap with a dedicated tool while the bike is at sack. Tricky with only one pair of hands. Likewise, connecting the pod controller and derailleur was simple and easy, as was linking it to the smartphone access app. Both these processes should be familiar to previous gen access users as well. Moving onto the trail, and just like its more expensive counterpart XX, it's the shift in quality that really stands out. Each change is crisp, smooth, and very precise, and only improves the harder you pedal. There's no need to back off to change gear. Even max effort previously gear grinding shifts feel smooth and are eerily quiet. While some people have grumbled at transmissions shift speed, I've not personally had an issue. I do have to agree it waits to shift until there is an available shift ramp on the cassette but I don't think gear changes are slow, and neither do they need to be quicker. By totally controlling shift timing, SRAM has eliminated the noisy, clunky, and grinding nature of missed shifts. These are frequently caused by an overzealous derailleur, moving before a cassette shift ramp is in the correct position, something impossible with transmission. Hop back and forth between this and a mechanical or access shifting drivetrain, and the difference is as clear as night and day, with transmission winning hands down. In short, transmission is mightily impressive in this respect. From just my initial impressions, I'll happily put my neck out and say SRAM has been successful in porting the luxurious feel of XX to GX, in the same way it did with GX access drivetrains when they were first launched. Although Tom pointed out some differences and cost savings, these don't appear to impact feel because the physical connection between the derailleur and shifter is gone. Let me give some context by looking at other group sets in SRAM's range. For example, an XX1 shifter feels much better than its lower tier SX counterpart, despite both doing the same job and being fairly similar in design. The same isn't true for access transmissions. GX feels as good as XX. 
you'll be happy to hear, like XX, clutch tension has also increased over the previous generation. Chain control is significantly improved over GX mechanical and access drivetrains, making your bike quieter on rough terrain. Add in the fixed full mount design that solves the floppy B knuckle and bolt of previous access drivetrains, and chain slap and noise is damped further. GX transmission's cassette gear ratios are the same as XX's. That means the jump between the bailout 52 tooth gear and the 44 tooth second gear is less pronounced, making changes in cadence and speed way smaller. While we've all seen the rather silly videos of people standing on their derailleurs, out in the real world, GX transmission, so far at least, is proving to be as robust as XX. I'm gonna continue testing to make sure it stands up to the miles of grueling riding. So stay tuned for a full review in the coming months. I'm sure you want to know the answer to the question, compared to GX drivetrains, is GX transmission an improvement? Even after only spending a short time with it, so far the answer is an unequivocal yes. Woo! So there we have it. We might not have had too long on GX Eagle transmission, but it certainly impressed us and we're excited to spend more time on it and really grind it through the ringer. If you want even more content on the new GX Eagle transmission, be sure to check out the news story on bikeradar.com with the link in the description and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on a never ending feast of the latest tech and impartial reviews. Speaking of which, for more of both of those things, then check out this video.